Hello, my crafty goblins and ghouls. I sure hope you're having a bootastic day. This is the Good Witch Robin Pitts with Sir Chauncey Rocco Creative Designs. If you're new to my channel or you're a returning viewer, welcome. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join me for my crafting adventure. Welcome to day 12 of the spectacular Halloween series that I co-hosted with my crafty BFF, Michelle Randolph from Shabby Chic Chick. Today, I made these adorable witches cauldron. I'm going to be giving away one of these cauldrons so be sure to watch until the end of the video to see if you are the lucky winner. For this project I used two different paper collections. On the left I used the Prima 31 which I have used in several projects throughout this series and on the right I dug into my Halloween craft vault and I dug out this older collection by Bo Bunny, it's called Wonderfully Wicked. To make these cauldrons, I used an SVG file by Simply Crafty SVG. This project can also be used for St. Patrick's Day to make a pot of gold. I'll be sure to include a link in the description box below. I created these cauldrons as part of a swap hosted by Michelle Randolph in our Facebook group, Loaded Envelope Galore and More. I'm going to adjust my camera so that I can give you a closer look at each one of these. This is my first cauldron and I love the way it turned out. I used the Prima 31 paper which is available at ASC Craft Supplies. They have a website and also an Etsy store. Please feel free to use my coupon code ROBIN10, that's all in capital letters, to receive a 10% discount upon checkout. This cauldron is four and a half inches tall by four and a half inches wide, and I just love all of the wonderful detail. On the front, I have this beautiful cluster we have this rosette that I've created. I used an SVG file by My Scrap Chick to make the rosette. And then I have a variety of ephemera from the 31 collection. We have this cute little witch, a bingo card, a little spider web here in gold foil, this little kitty. And I love this cute little ghost. He's holding a pink jack-o'-lantern. And then we have this chipboard sentiment that says October 31st. In the back, I have this black and white speckled tool, and then little flowers from the collection. When I turn this around, you can see that I have definitely blinged this out with this beautiful rhinestone. I think that is so elegant, and this paper is so much fun. You've got a witch's hat, a book of magic spells, you've got a cauldron and potion bottles. On the top, I distressed the lid as well as the base with a light pink ink. And if you look closely, I did use an embossing folder to add texture on the base. This is a spider web print. On the inside, you can see that this is filled with goodies. I have some fun bows. I showed you these bows yesterday in my Halloween embellishment video, but I love these cute little bat bows. I have some fun rosettes, and this is also filled with chocolate candy. So as you can see, this is very deep, and it is filled to the top. With For my second cauldron, I decided to go a little dark and spooky. On the left side, we have this large spider with an orange sequin body. I've cut these ephemera pieces out from the paper collection, and then I use glossy accents to give it a nice glossy shine. And this says pure concentrated extract of spider hair. I used flat black rhinestones here. Here we have a fun floral cluster spray. And then we have another spider, this time an amber gem spider crawling up the cauldron. We have another tag here that says concentrated extract of owl's eyeballs. And then it says concentrated extract of centipede legs. And then what I think is really fun is I included another floral cluster spray, but we have this rat that's crawling up the cauldron. Can you see it? It's this 3D rat and his tail wraps in between the flowers. And the last sentiment we have here says pure concentrated extract of snake scale. Just like the first cauldron, I have a variety of bows. 
Here we have a bat bow and several different rosettes. And this is also filled with chocolate candy. For the base, I use this rose gold paper and I emboss that also with the spider embossing folder. Now that I've given you an overview of these cauldrons, I'm going to gather my craft materials so that we can make one together. I'll be right back. To make my 3D Witches Cauldron, I am using a digital file by Simply Crafty SVG. I have imported the file into Cricut Design Space and I've cut them out on my Cricut Maker. Included in the file are the following pieces. You'll have eight panels that look like this, and to save time, I've folded along the score lines. You'll have this piece, which is the base of the cauldron. These two pieces make up the lid of the cauldron. You'll have these two tabs and then two rings. These are the handles of the cauldron. You will have eight decorative panels and again to save time I've already curved each of these. This will make it easier to attach to the cauldron once it's assembled. You'll have several pieces that look like this. This will go on the base of the cauldron and I wanted to give it a little texture so I put this through a spiderweb embossing folder. You'll have this large piece here, and this makes the base or the stand that the cauldron will be resting upon. And then you'll have these two pieces. This is the base of the stand, and this is the top part of the stand. So let's begin. We're going to work with this piece first. I've already folded along the score lines. The first thing we need to do is glue these decorative panels and you'll notice the shape of it fit exactly on these panels here. So we're going to glue on each of these pieces and then we'll be back for the next step. Now we have all of the decorative panels attached. We are going to close up this circle by gluing this tab to this piece right here, just like so. Then you want to turn this piece over and you want to grab these two pieces, you're going to take the smaller piece and we're going to attach that inside and you want to make sure that each of the edges of this piece are attached to each of the tabs. Okay, so you want to go ahead and glue that down and then as you're gluing it down, you want to push the sides of this base so that it fits perfectly along this piece. So I'm going to put glue on all of these tabs here Make sure you put an ample amount so that it doesn't dry out on you before you finish gluing on the last tab. Okay, so I've added glue. I'm going to take this top part here and I'm going to glue it to the first tab and then go around with my finger and then just press it just like so, so that there's a nice snug fit all around. Okay, now we're going to fold down these tabs and we're going to take this piece, just like we did with the inner piece, we're going to attach it to one tab and then slowly glue it around the base. So go ahead and do that now. Now we're going to work on the lid of the cauldron. So grab these two pieces and again, I've already folded along each of these score lines. What we're going to do is glue these little triangle tabs to this center piece right here. So it's going to be just like so. And so you want to do that to this piece. So let's glue one together. Just add a little bit of glue on this tab here. See? Glue it right up to the score line. Give that a few seconds to hold. Glue on the second tab. And then the third tab. and you have one half of the lid of the cauldron complete. Go ahead and do that to this second piece. Now that we have these two pieces assembled, we need to attach them. 
So you'll notice that on the ends of both pieces you have this little triangle and then this connecting piece, which is what we use to connect these pieces together. What we want to do is glue this first tab down, and that's going to be glued on this first ledge right here. Not the second piece, but this piece right here. So you want to glue it in, just like so, glue, in, glue it in at an angle. And then you're going to glue this second tab in, and that's going to be glued just like so. So let me show you what I mean. We're going to add glue just on this little tab here. Glue that right up to the score line. See? Let that hold. So it's almost at a little angle here. And then we're going to add glue to this larger tab on the bottom. We're going to fold that in. And then we're going to repeat this on the other side. And now we have the lid of our cauldron. So we're going to set this aside and we're going to grab these eight panels. What we're going to do is grab two panels. We're going to glue these tabs together just like so. So you want to start at the top and then work your way all the way down to the bottom, just making sure that each of these score lines are aligned. And then work your way all the way down to the bottom. So go ahead and glue on the rest of the eight panels and then we'll be back to close up the cauldron together. Once you have all of your eight panels glued on, we're going to close up the box and we're going to attach the glue just like we have for all of the other eight tabs. And then just work your way slowly. Right up to the score line. Okay, and you want to make sure that you run your finger up and down the seams inside to make sure that those tabs are strongly attached. Now we're going to grab the lid and we're going to attach the lid onto the base of the cauldron. And each of these little tabs, you want to pull them outside just like so. They're going to be glued on one by one to each of these panels. So you want to glue on one panel and then I'm going to add an ample amount of glue around the perimeter because it'll be difficult to add glue once the tabs are inside the cauldron. So I'm just going to put glue on just like so on all sides and then stick it inside the cauldron just like so. And then you'll glue each of the tabs in one by one. So just take your time and you can wipe off any of the excess glue. Once your lid is attached to your cauldron, you want to turn it over. We're going to grab this piece and we are going to attach it to the bottom just like so. So go ahead and glue that down now. Once you have the bottom glued in place, you want to turn it over and take your bone folder and make sure you press down each of the tabs on the bottom. You actually have enough room to stick your hand in and you can use your thumb and just go around the perimeter. Now grab your decorative panels. There are eight pieces together and I've already curved these. Let me show you how I did that. I simply took my bone folder and just put a slight bend to it just like so. For each of these panels the top is slightly smaller than the bottom. You want to take the narrow panel and then you're going to glue it right under the lid to the bottom. Go ahead and glue down each of the eight panels and then we'll be back for the next step. Now that you have all of the decorative panels glued on, you want to attach the base of the cauldron to this pedestal. And this piece is the exact same size as this piece. So you want to line up the corners just like so and then Give it a nice little jiggle so that there's a strong adhesion. Once you do that, you can begin decorating your cauldron as you like. I'm going to finish decorating this offline and then I will be back with the final reveal. Now that I've given you an overview and a tutorial of these witches' cauldrons, it's time to find out who the lucky winner is. You will have your choice of either the pink or the dark cauldron. As a reminder, the winner is selected using a 
tool called YouTube Random Comment Picker. Once the winner has been selected, I do verify that their channel is a visible subscriber to both my channel as well as Michelle Randolph's channel, Shabby Chic Chick. And the winner is Annette Reed. Once again, the winner is Annette Reed. Congratulations, Annette. You will have your choice of the pink or the dark cauldron. Please claim your prize within 72 hours. I have included my contact information in the description box below, and I look forward to receiving your email soon. This concludes my review of my Witch's Cauldrons. Hopefully I've inspired you with new and creative ideas. If you like this video, please take a moment to give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Please be sure to join me tomorrow for day 13, the final day of this spectacular Halloween series. I have one more project for you and I will be announcing the grand prize winner. Don't miss the fun. I look forward to seeing you soon. Happy crafting and happy Halloween.